everybody, Pinch out here, and we're back on another episode today on our Honda ADV. Now, in today's episode, we're going to learn how to install a DCR cam on your 150cc motor on your Honda ADV. So, let's get to work because this is Pinch Out's Corrupt. Alright guys, what's going on? Pinch Out here. We're back on day two. Um, I had an issue. I had it timed incorrectly. Before I even turn the bike on, uh, you always rotate it. Now, one thing that I verified and made sure that I knew I was off time, even though you're on TDC, sometimes, since it's a motorcycle, it's a little harder to tell when the piston's all the way up versus um, when it's slightly down because there's such a drastic or minimal difference between TDC and BDC on these bikes. Um, so I turned it on, it didn't sound right, I immediately turned it off. Um, nothing got damaged, again, because it was timed kind of backwards, I guess you want to say. Um, so where you have to really, really, really place close attention here is the, there's actually two ways to confirm timing on these bikes, and I figured it out so that way you guys don't have this problem. So I'm gonna put this portion of the video at the beginning. So when you guys watch the DIY, I'll put it back in the video again, so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So without further ado, this is the exact way it's supposed to be timed prior to you taking anything off the bike that's mechanically important, okay? Clean so, like I was talking about, number one, your first timing mark. Now, they're identical in the way they land on the um, <clears throat> on visual, but right here, there's a notch here. Not the little marker that's on here. The notch, the actual notch that you see right there. This notch has got to match with this one here. So that first... <laughs> Indicator is number one saying that you're a top dead center. Now that's not 100% accurate because if I rotate this all the way over, it'll put you again. Um, cause, cause there's two different strokes. There's the compression stroke and then there's the exhaust stroke on top dead center. You got to make sure you're on the compression stroke top dead center. So they're slightly off on these bikes. So the one way to verify 100% that you're on the compression stroke of top dead center is you match that and you come right over here, okay? This is in the actual repair manual as well. I'm gonna walk you through it. Now, you'll see here, these two bolts coincide with these two markings here on your casting or these two bolts here. They should be perpendicular, pretty much identical angle. On top of that, the word uh, KWN should be on top, okay? On top here. So it should be these two bolts perpendicular and the word as well centered perfectly in the middle of this circle. All right, guys? Then, confirming this, uh, both intake and exhaust valves should be loose you hear that okay that's how we know we're on top dead center on the um compression stroke uh that means both valves are completely closed that means the piston's on its full way up to make power um now number two uh, actually no let's see one two and three uh number three is the valve adjustment on these guys um, again, I'm leaving the entire manual on the description for you guys, but for the intake one, it's 0 0.004 for the exhaust one on the back. It's 0 0.009. Okay. And you're allowed to add plus one. So plus 0 0.001. So you can go all the way open to 0 0.005 or 0 0.00, 0 0.010. 0 on the uh, intake and exhaust. That's it. You can't do any more. For your torque specifications, again, look at your manual that I provided in the description so that way you guys get it all going. Once you look at your manual and everything matches everything, torque everything to spec, 
put it all back together in reverse, fill it with coolant, let it idle, let the thermostat open, make sure you don't hear any weird funky noises. Uh, the, when I had the cam in backwards, um, it made a loud tapping noise. It didn't mean that the, the valves were hitting, it meant the valves were opening and closing in the wrong duration. So that caused the me to be immediately suspicious. I immediately did a quick valve job adjustment thinking maybe I, I did something wrong there. That didn't make a difference. So the moment I went from valve adjustments to flipping the cam over, it made a, I made my correction. Second, I'm actually no, so we did one, two, three, four, the last piece of the puzzle, number five. On your cam, okay, on your factory cam and the aftermarket cam, you see this little notch here, okay? You know you have, a, you have this on backwards if the notch is facing down. Then this little, or nipple, right here, this little nipple has to be facing straight up, centered again to the top of the head. And that's how you know this is correct. When it's up here, there's a ton of slop left and right of the cam. Um, don't discourage when you're doing the, your reverse installation of the cam gear and everything. Uh, it's pretty much, uh, it's just take your time. Just take your time and make sure, again, this is centered. Everything is centered or runs perpendicular with all the casing markings. That way you know timing is exact on everything all right guys um now i'm gonna pretty much reverse install the whole um rest of the bike and then actually ride it uh, i'm actually gonna get it warmed up and do a coolant uh, system fill and i'll walk you guys through that process as well but that's what i wanted to do that that's super important so that's the beginning of this video and now i'm gonna put this also towards the end so last episode we walked you guys through on how to remove the fairings I went one step further, forgot to film it, but it's okay, it's super easy. Um, I removed this uh, cover right here, the lower portion, uh, which gives you access pretty much to the fuel tank. Much better access here to the head. You guys can see here, here's the, uh, the water pump where the head, uh, the cam is installed on, and then the valve cover right up on top. Uh, we did it this way uh, because we want to make sure it's easy for everyone to do. So, first things first, you need to drain your coolant. There's a little uh, little uh, port right here, drain plug. You're gonna need a T30. Crank that lefty loosey. Get a bucket underneath there. Right, I got a big old yellow white bucket here. And then it actually fit beautifully right there. And then just drain it. Once you drain it, um, you need a 10 millimeter socket right here on top. And open up your, uh, your radiator cap. That way the rest of the fluid will uh, flow freely uh, out. And that way you can drain all of it. Next, you're going to need some, uh, some needle nose pliers. And you need to disconnect the radiator lines off off the radiator because you need access to the flywheel behind the uh, radiator as well. So there are some pinch clamps one and two to the radiator, and then you have one, two, three, and four 10 millimeter bolts that hold the radiator assembly, so you can get access to the flywheel. So we're going to try to get. I can reach this one for sure. That back. That's my upper radiator hose. Already loose. Next one is the lower one, which is kind of finicky because they put the clamp on the back and there's no access to it from any side of the motor. Kind of dumb. I got no access to that stupid clamp. So I'm gonna have to see if I can twist it in a minute. So what I'm gonna do right now 
is I took off one, two, three, four bolts. They're all 10 millimeters. This gives us access to pretty much a little clamp up here. That's for the coolant reservoir. Let's see here. Here's a piece of harness right here. It's attached to the radiator. Two pieces of harness. That's the radiator. But this will give me the access I needed. Maybe. <laughs> You see there, there's the uh, there's the uh, fan for the radiator, and then this is the flywheel, and then there's a timing mark right here um, that gets us the TDC. So we're gonna get that in just a moment. All right, so the radiator is now the radiator is now removed. Um, so how to pinch the hose a little bit right here towards the edge and kind of crack it loose, and then I finally was able to. Uh, twist the metal clamp down and out and then pull the hose off. It was a little finicky, but I got it. Then the remainder of the cooler. Set your radiator out of the way. You don't want to damage it. Now we're over here in front of the motor, or actually the transmission, and this is your flywheel. So you got to find. TDC and there's a marker right there. I think it's, this is the marker, yep, right there. Little notch up close, I'll get you there. You guys can see this. but there's a little notch right here a notch right there now you got to confirm it you guys can't just be like oh yeah it's TDC there we need to double check it uh, by pulling the spark plug out make sure the pistons all the way to the top and then we'll check the valve train as well just to make sure the valve train is all loose because um, when you're in TDC all the valves should be all the way up which means there's no tension on anything. Uh, the cam in the intake and exhaust cams, or the intake and exhaust roller, are pretty much off the valves. And that means the, the springs are pushing all the way up and there's no tension. So it should be all loosey goosey. All right, so we need to remove the spark plug, which is right over here. You gotta pull this little flap open. There's a grommet here, and you just pull the cover off. You'll have access to the spark plug wire right there, which is just gonna pull out. You'll see the white porcelain plug right there. That's it, that's your spark plug access. Now get your spark plug tool, we'll be right back. This is your 5 8 and a nice long 12 inch extension, or 6 inch extension. Whatever you have available. Pull your spark plug out. Uh, it's actually a good time to inspect it. There's a part number right there if you guys are curious what it is. MR8K9 is the part number for this plug specifically. Alright. Now, you pull it out, make sure you set it aside and don't drop it. This, these right here, the surface is porcelain. If this cracks, that's the end of it. Gotta get a new plug. All right, guys. So we'll set it aside. Now, what we're gonna do here is verify TDC. Since we already set TDC over there on the flywheel, we need to make sure we have TDC over here at the spark plug port or the piston. So, give me just a second. Okay. So, just like any other gas engine in general. Um, one thing I tell a lot of people is uh, when you hit TDC, there's a small little gap in between left and right of the piston movement where there's no piston movement at all. 
um, that's when you hit the top, the very top, and there's a little bit of play left and right, that, and then the, there's no movement. So I crammed a little flathead screwdriver in here to confirm that mm, pretty much my experience with uh, large four-cylinder engines, that's the same concept, and yes, I am correct. So when you get to TDC and you cram in your screwdriver, you should be able to move your uh, flywheel left and right. Very little where the piston doesn't move. And when that happens, that means you are at TDC. So once we're over here, correct, we're gonna come back around the bike. And we look at our markings again. So right here, this is our marking here and here. These two have to match up. As long as, as long as you're there, you are set. You are set to TDC. That means you do not touch, you do not do anything anymore here. You're done, okay? So next step now is to um, remove the uh, intake manifold and the throttle body and kind of move them out of the way. Uh, that gives us access to the chain tensioner. And then from there, we're gonna remove the valve cover and then the water pump and then give us access to the cam to yank the cam out. And we should be um, pretty much moving forward even more so. Uh, I've never done this job before. So I am using uh, pretty much a DIY as reference online and a scooter swap shop uh, DIY as well for reference. I'm just going more thoroughly uh, than everybody else is doing online. That way when you guys do it, you can walk through it with me much more um, accurately. All right, so we got you guys a better angle here. So now we have to pull out the intake manifold and the throttle body because the throttle body has a tensioner right here underneath it to pretty much control the tension of the chain. So that has to come off. So easiest way to do this is take the two 10 millimeters off here for the fuel injector pop this up and out of the way and then the two screws right here uh, Phillips screws unclamp those and then this should let us slide or move the throttle body over and out out of the way that way we have access to the tensioner here uh, once we do that um, we're gonna unbolt the fuel line here get this out of the way as well so we have more access to the valve cover over here on the back and have a better um, how's the word uh, better access to everything as well so the two bolts here for the fuel injector come right off they're 10 millimeters pull that straight up it should give you easy pop out and then um, Move the harness out of the way just like that. Put your two bolts back in. That way you don't lose your, uh, your bolts here. Now we're going to take these two Phillips screws. off of there should be enough you can see right here it is not loose Just like that, throttle body is now moved out of the way. You don't have to do any more with that. Now you have access to the chain tensioner right here. We're not gonna go any further with this. Next step is we're gonna get this part right here, this part of the loom, uh, kinda out of the way. 
So there's a 10 here and a 10 here we want to remove. This one right here is for the fuel line. This one right here is for the bracket that mounts the fuel line and the breather hose together. So what I'm going to do is turn that out of the way just so it's moved out. This guy's going to move over. I'm going to put these bolts back in just so I know where they came from. You're going to want to remove the clamp that's on the breather on the head right there. Super easy. These are so not that much tension on them, so they come off really easily. So you can pop this one out. There's one more 10 millimeter right here. Right here that's hidden underneath the lines. Now I'm going to remove that one. The reason for this. I'm making myself more room to be comfortable uh, working here in this really tight space. I don't like working in really cramped spots. I am making more work for myself, but I want to be able to do this as calmly as possible. Okay. So now I have access to my 10 mil here, right here, and then there's two more down below. So there's four in total for the valve cover, okay? We're going to remove the valve cover now, and then we're going to work on the water pump uh, portion next. So I'm working on the valve cover. Remember there's four 10 millimeter bolts that are on here pretty snug. But once you break them loose, they come off with, with no effort. Now we have to take the valve cover off because we have to be able to take off the, the main portion of the valve train to tighten pretty much the cam and everything else. So and now the valve cover is now unbolted. We're going to remove it now. it through here. Looks like I can't. Okay, well, I can have the valve cover sit down here for the moment. Nope, I cannot. To figure out how to fish it out of there. With the valve cover now removed, now you guys can see that we have the valve train ready. So now we gotta confirm that we are, oh, these are adjustable valves. I did not know that. These will need uh, adjustments later. These valves uh, require adjustment, just so you guys know, because um, they're rocker arms right here. These are little, these are right here called rocker arms. And as they go up and down, up and down, over time, the valve will get loose. And because of that, it will have require pretty much adjusting over time so this is another way to get, get access to it and do it not that bad and there's the chain as well all right well like i was saying before make sure it's cdc you'll feel you'll see that's all loose that means it's a tdc next step is the tensioner Two 10 millimeter bolts. Pull straight up. And that's the chain tensioner, okay guys? Don't mess with anything else. Leave it alone and just set it aside. <clears throat> now that we've removed the tensioner, 
Now the tension off the chain. Okay, you can feel that right there. It's all loose now. Okay. The next step is to take the water pump housing off, which is on the other side. And it's right here. So what you need to do is take off this line right here, just pinch and pull. There's a 10, 10, three 10s right there, and an eight. Those three come off, and it should, let's see, nope, that's not gonna take everything off. We still have, let's see, this lower radiator hose is detached already, and the upper hose is detached. There's one more. Um, line here. Yeah, it's this guy right here. This line right here. It's hard to point at, but this line right here has to be detached so the whole housing could come off as one piece. Okay, so now we're going to pinch those lines. Here's this one first. So that one's off. Okay, you see the little nipple right there. There's one more. Let's see if I can get it from one of these sides. The top here. Kind of in a funky spot, so. Was definitely on there nicely. Yep. I'll get so it right I took now. this one off, and then the one on top here. Everything else should be ready to come off. So, one, two, three tens, and an eight millimeter. Don't forget, guys. So I can probably get one. Oh, there's also a lower hose as well. I just saw that right now, right here. See where my finger's pointing? There's a lower radiator hose too. Uh, so that has to come out too before you even take off the water pump housing, okay? So you see right here where my finger's pointing. Hopefully you can see that hose. That hose is full of coolant. Made a little little mess down here, but nothing bad. So just just a just a reminder, guys. You guys can see over there my O2 sensor, my wideband O2. My buddy German Steve got that put in there for me. Freaking love the guy, dude. Made an awesome job for me. Um, so now. These two 10 millimeters and this 8 millimeter need to come off now. Let's see if I can reach this one. Okay, that's two. Yeah, I got my little ratchet. Tight fit, but not too bad. OK, 
Okay. Now I gotta get my eight mil and an extension. Right here. So I don't know how much coolant is inside this part. I probably have dropped all of it already, so. Four bolts for the water pump housing. Everything went according to my plan. Should everything come out nicely? As a whole, like that. All of this should come out like this. Okay? Put this down here out of the way and you'll see here's the water pump so I don't know if the water pump is timed or not but we got to yank this out too now that runs off the cam so I have to figure out how to yank this out in just a moment so what you should do once you take the cover off then you gotta put your hand right behind here and you'll have access to the water pump and just start pulling it, wiggle it out like that. Don't mess with it at all. Just pull it straight out like that in this position, okay? Because it's driven right off the cam. You'll see right here where it mounts into, where it goes into the actual cam, okay? I'm gonna set this guy apart away. So now we're almost ready to put the pull the cam out. There's two more bolts inside here. They're Allen heads that we gotta unbolt. And then once you unbolt that, then there's a couple of things you have to take off the top here on the top of the head, and then we can slide the cam out. Okay, so there's two four millimeter Allen heads right here. Make sure you have a little handy dandy my, uh, magnet tool to yank them out. Um, there's two, I believe they're eight millimeter, I'm gonna confirm right now, um, bolts that sit on top of the head. Yep, you also have to break loose the uh, valve um, adjusters. Uh, those are nine millimeters, so you have to make sure you have a lot of slop so the cam can come out. So you need to make sure again, everything's going to be out of adjustment. So this is part where you're going to need to do after the fact. So hopefully you guys, if you've ever done a valve job on a car before. You're going to learn how to do it on a bike. It's super easy. Um, but you just need to give yourself some rocker space. So uh, right now, currently, I'm just breaking loose the, um, the valve adjusters. So there's a lot of slop. And when I mean a lot, there's a lot of slop. Okay. It's no big deal. Um... You just gotta set them back to spec. It's not hard to do, but I'll show you guys what I ended up doing right now. You see here, uh, right here, you need a nine millimeter here. You see how I broke this loose? And you see how there's a lot of play on your rocker? Same over here on the back one. These two right here are eight millimeters. You need to pull these out completely. These are pretty much what locks the um, the cam pretty much in place. 
Um, so these have to come out as well. There's one, two, and they're dark. So now that I took those two off and I broke loose the, uh, the valve uh, rockers so the tension is off, I still have one more four millimeter bolt here on the sprocket. Make sure you have a zip tie handy. You gotta make sure you have your zip tie handy. Um, the reason for this, you gotta be able to pop in the zip tie and hold it so it doesn't, um, what's the word, um, uh, fall into the motor and you lose the chain and trying to figure out how to get that out, okay guys? Uh, very important when you when, be, when you pull out the sprocket for the cam because the cam's not going to be out yet. We still need to remove some more stuff. So next right here is the next sprocket right here. I mean next Allen bolt. I'm going to be very gentle with it because I want to make sure the chain doesn't fall off like that. Almost lost the chain. So right now, what I'm doing is trying to get the sprocket off the chain. Let me get my, if I got my finger on it, need my zip tie here. Where is it? So now I can hold on to the to the chain while I try to finger out the sprocket here. At the same time. Okay. The sprocket is out now. Set that aside as well with the cam. Now, if we look down inside where the cam is facing, um, it's, faced, uh, it's facing straight up. So, I'm going to bring you guys a little bit closer here. That's what we're looking at. See how this is facing up? And this right here is facing up. So, that's how we know uh, where the cam, the new cam is going to be mounted or pushed into. So now let's slide this guy out. Okay, now you'll be able to fit your finger like this on the cam and then kind of wiggle it back and forth until you yank it out. It's going to be a little tough so I think there's one more bolt. Yep, one more bolt. There's a 10 millimeter right here. You need a wrench for that. I remember saying earlier, I was wondering what kept the cam from coming out and it's this 10 millimeter nut right here, or bolt. It's kind of like acts as a stopper for the cam. Has a washer on it. Pretty much is just 
prevent it from sliding out. You guys can watch as I struggle I'm yanking this little little tiny camshaft out. There you go. Just got to rotate it a couple times. There you have it. Honda ADV camshaft removed. All right, so now it's time to reverse the process. We're going to be using the DCR cam provided by Scooter Swap Shop. It go, it's the exact same, pretty much almost the same cam. <laughs> it doesn't have that weird little uh, contraption over here. I think it's for lift of some sort or balancing maybe. It's got to go in so we gotta oil up the uh, valve really quick I mean the cam before we install because uh, we don't want to scuff any surfaces or cause any weird uh, metal on metal start so but this is the DCR cam and we got this from scooter swap shop all right time to install just do everything in reverse Right, it should be simple, they say. It should only take a little couple of minutes, they say. go cam is now installed okay next is that 10 millimeter uh, nut that goes on top remember oil it up before you install it do not install that sucker dry don't want any metal on metal uh, starting on there And also remember that the cam needs to be facing upwards. So this right here prevents the cam from coming out. These two 10 millimeter, uh, eight millimeter, eight millimeter bolts here have no idea what they do. Honestly, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, but as per scooter swap shop uh, their DIY they rem suggested removing them so I did so we gotta remember we gotta tension these two we still have the chain out we gotta tighten that down so this one has to be pre tightened before anything else gets tightened on these guys so this has to go on pretty snug um, I don't have a torque spec for these yet I'll probably list it in the description for you guys once I get the right information for it.
So you guys can see here, I already slid the, can, the sprocket in, but I haven't bolted it in yet. Um, and the reason for this, because the chain is down here already. So what I gotta do is get the chain pulled up, and then I gotta get the, um, um, what's it called, the chain slid back over and get it all marked correctly. So I gave myself a hallelujah moment. Now, the way I talked earlier about TDC on this bike, it's kind of weird. It gets a little deceiving for me. I found the repair manual, so I'm gonna give that guys on the description down below. You'll see there's a little tooth here and there's a notch. Use the notch for TDC, okay? Not the little triangle. So. I'm going to try to put this at the beginning or whatever. It doesn't cause any issues, okay? Even if you had it TDC there, all you do is crank it back once, and then this is at TDC. <clears throat> and the way that you confirm it, I'll try to get you guys there. You see how this bolt, this bolt line up with these two uh, casings and then you'll notice the words or the word KWN um, if this was perfectly flat in this horizon this would be a 90 degree straight and these two bolts would be at a 90 degree so if we turn the camera like this it's exactly the way we we're talking about 90 degrees perfect that will set the exhaust and intake valve at the right amount of play that you need to do it correctly to get your uh, your um, valve uh, set your valve set so this is your intake valve this is your exhaust valve intake valve is set at 0 0.010 or 0 0.010 exhaust valve is at 0 0.024 all right for your uh, feeler gauge here somewhere around here um, all right, guys, get that taken care of, uh, and then reverse install everything else. I'll well, again, I'll do my best to walk you guys through that as well. So next step is that I have to unbolt stuff again um, because right now it's, some stuff is actually in the way. Um, I was not gonna walk you through and reverse install. So, um, first is the, um, I already torqued to spec the water, uh, no, the cam gear and pretty much the, what is this over here? The, um, the valve, um, oh my goodness, I'm losing my, my train of thought here. I'm just so excited. I finally got this running correctly. Um, I torqued to spec already the the valve adjustments. I just got to get these two tightened down, the two on the top of the head. Um, once those are tightened down, I'm going to get the water uh, the water pump and then the housing for that done. That's the next portion and the valve cover. I think that's all taken care of. But now i got to add new RTV here because we took it apart. So... Uh, just like car stuff, I don't know if you guys ever watch my car videos, but um, on the valve cover, um, there's only two points on this valve cover that need a little bit of RTV. It's the corners of this big hoop around here and over here in the back of it. That's it. There's no other location on this uh, head that requires RTV. All right, guys? I'm just giving you guys a heads up on that. <laughs> I got a bunch of oil down below. I got to hose that off when I... Get this bike all back together. I'm going to take apart right here the fuel injector. Now because we use it just for my test setup right now to get it running. And you'll see here in the injector 
there's a rubber grommet in there. Make sure to pull that out and slide it over the injector um, before reinstalling. You're gonna need that. And I'll, again, I'll show you, I'll walk you guys through that. It's really, really simple. So, number one, I gotta tighten these two down. And those are two 10 millimeter bolts. Um, one thing you guys got to keep in mind uh, when reinstalling the um, when reinstalling your uh, chain tensioner, once you timed everything correctly, uh, don't turn the bike on without this tensioner installed. There's a screw on top of here. Uh, you use a tiny little flathead screwdriver, and if you crank it all the way over, sometimes it'll lock. If not, you just hold it in place and then unbolt these two bolts and that way um, you don't for or damage the uh, the spring built into the tensioner you do this in reverse so you pull back on the spring on the tensioner and then put the uh, while you're holding this you tighten both screws all the way down and then you let this um, spring rotate itself back into place okay It's actually already pretty snug. Here's a screw that belongs on top of here. Make sure you have a good screwdriver for this. This these go on snug. Okay. <laughs> So this portion of the job is now done. Um, I'm not gonna do anything else up here yet. I gotta get everything on the side. So the water pump is next. And the way that you know the direction or the orientation is there's only one hole that's threaded on the water pump, which is this one on the far right. These three are gonna be situated to the left. So it should be mounted like kind of like this. This one should be towards the upper left and then everything else lines up. Just like that. Should just fall into place if it's if it's correct. Next is your uh, water pump housing. Make sure your water pump housing is free of contaminants. Uh, one thing that I did realize when I was putting mine back in, um, when you put these back in, make sure these areas are clean. And see these little uh, metal uh, inserts here? These are alignment nuts or inserts. Uh, be careful because they will fall out. Um, I had one fall down and I had to take it apart again and make it seal. So uh, just as a reminder, be very careful with these. These do, uh, do and will fall out. So be very careful, all right, guys? When I'm doing this one, before I mount it in place, I, I use, I put this hose in first before I mount my uh, housing here. And then this guy comes up here. And then what I do is I push this guy in next and this should help me align everything down below a lot easier. If you want to, you can start putting all the other hoses in. <clears throat> but try not to put them all the way in, because what happens, it'll create some type of drag and it won't allow it to line up correctly. When 
I do a keep constant pressure on it. And I do, I do the little eight millimeter on the right first. It's the only bolt that doesn't bolt to the actual um, motor. It's like it only clamps everything down together for you. Again, hand tighten. And then get the other three in here and just get them started. And these are three 10 millimeter bolts. Okay. All right, now that we got the um, <clears throat> pump, the cam and all that uh, tightened up, torque to spec, we got, um, I think we got these tightened down. Let me double check these one more time. Um, just because, you know, you gotta always quadruple, quintuple check all your stuff. Yeah, these are, yeah, I got these torqued down. Uh, once these are set, um, remember, uh, clean off any RTV that's uh, around here on the valve cover. We want to do the valve cover next before we touch anything else over here. Um, on the valve cover, there's four 10 millimeter bolts, uh, which I have on the side. Uh, remember what I was saying earlier, uh, make sure you put a little bit of dab of RTV here and follow this little hoop over to the back and put an RTV on the edge of that. I mean, I'm talking about like a teardrop of RTV. It's not much you need, all right? So you see how much RTV I have on here. It's very minimal. And you just gotta cram it into that corner. That's pretty much it. Repeat the process on the other side. Clean your hands. Now the one thing I don't like about this valve cover, um, the gasket doesn't really stay in place very well. It likes to fall down on the edges. So just take your time guys um, and make sure the gasket stays in place and does not fall. Um, prior to installing it, make sure again guys, um, you guys clean the surfaces of the valve cover. Make sure there's no oil there. It just helps uh, with the valve cover um, sealing nicely for you guys. We're going to slap that guy on here. And tighten all these bolts um, kind of do them in a cross pattern there's only four so what you want to do is get one corner get the other now by removing the side covers of this um, of the of your bike this job is so much easier oh man I mean I'm not gonna, you know, talk smack a little bit, but uh, Scooter Swap Shop <laughs> suggested I pull the motor. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard, honestly, to pull the motor on this, but I just wasn't ready to do something like that yet on my bike. Um, not yet. I'm gonna do that eventually, but Yeah, they, they hit me up and they, they, they said, they, again, they suggested I should pull the motor. And I kind of thought to myself, yeah, I mean, I could do a whole DIY like that, but some people don't have the space, you know? Let's be honest. Like, some people don't got the space at home to pull a motor. And uh, don't get me wrong, it's it's a bike and it should be, you should have enough adequate space at home. Oh, excuse me. But. You know, maybe you don't want to go that far, you know. Maybe your your goal was just to do the cam and a couple little things here and there and that's it. You know, so 
that's why I'm doing the video like this so you guys can see what I'm talking about it's not that bad I thought it was gonna be a lot harder because the way that they filmed their DIY it, it, it looked pretty pretty complicated and it kind of discouraged me a little bit uh, before I did mine but now that I'm you know arm deep in here it wasn't that bad you know I definitely learned a lot during the process uh, made a couple mistakes but nothing that damaged my bike just mistakes that I caught on since I do a lot of car work um, I was able to figure out pretty quickly what I did wrong and correct it so you guys don't have to experience it um, again I definitely recommend you guys watch this video all the way through uh, please please watch it uh, and understand the difficulties that you will come across during this process um, so valve covers on nice and snug so that's done so now pretty much the whole engine is ready to be put back together like 100 um, percent so next step here is to put in your throttle body so this guy, since everything's already snug down here, your throttle body's next. So it should just go on. There are two little notches right here and here um, to align your throttle body. Okay. Get a good screwdriver. And this guy down and start alternating back and forth with these screws you'll see why it just makes the job a little bit easier So throttle body is now installed. My next thing is my fuel injector will be last. Um, we got to get these uh, lines back up and mounted in the correct location. So this line with the aggressive bend is the breather hose that goes on top of the valve cover. Okay, this bracket right here mounts right here in this spot. There's a 10 millimeter that goes on top of it. As a reminder, make sure you do everything by hand. Don't be um, don't be courageous and start tightening everything down with like a ratchet. Just do it by hand. You want a nice, snug, you know, simple fitment on here. This line right here goes underneath the throttle body right down here. So. And you use this line to get it all, this bracket to get it uh, nice and snug down below. So, again, that has a 10 millimeter right here. The one thing I disliked about this one, this bracket, is that it's really snug. So, getting the 10 millimeter on here is kind of hard. So, what I do is I bring my little extension here. Kind of get it going. Again, nothing's on here like tightened down at all. It's just snug so we can get the lines uh, routed correctly. So the valve cover one sits on here. Nice and snug. This guy right here, uh, I'd feed it through this right in front of this one. Go over. And it, it goes inside of this one right here, so we have to move this guy out. And it goes down here. And you feed it through here. And then, then that goes in this little nipple that's on the manifold. Just like that. 
Okay, should be rotted nice and snug. Now we're over here now with the O-ring that I was talking about or the little rubber grommet that sits inside. Sometimes it likes to fall back into place inside uh, inside of the um, uh, injector housing on top of the manifold. What you do is just put it back on the actual injector and slide it back. Injector is popping out. Unbolt or take the two 10 millimeter bolts you put on top. I like to leave my stuff back where I take it out of. Um, to me, it just makes makes things a lot more comfortable. Push down nice and firm. Make sure that O-ring seats hand tighten. Never put this, don't zip this thing on. If you got a light, like little uh, torque, like a little 12 volt uh, impact gun um, that doesn't use heavy torque, you can use that if you want to. But again, don't use it to torque it like 20 ugga uggas, you know? Uh, these, this line or this wire feeds into here, just like that. So you'll see how everything is nice and kind of in place and out of its own way. Um, so that, and then my last one, this one you're, you guys aren't gonna have unless you guys did the big fuel injector line and the bigger fuel injector. Um, it's because this is a, a 170cc injector. Um, so you guys aren't gonna have this one. Uh, I should have a different bracket that goes there. Just, just a heads up. I kind of modified the factory one to work the way I wanted it to work. And it actually uh, did a good job. So if you guys are interested in this one, just check, look at it. It's not it's pretty straightforward. Nothing crazy. So I'm going to get my little ratchet and my 10 millimeter and extension. And just hand tighten all these things right here. Everything's really, really nice and snug. Injectors in there where it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, that's that's it. And then all we have left is just a radiator right here that has the upper and lower hose. Um, before I put that in, I'm gonna fire it up one more time. I'm gonna listen to the valve, make sure the valve still sound correct. If everything sounds uh, the way I want it to, I'm gonna put the radiator in. Um, actually, you know what, let me put the radiator in and then fire it up and then I'll add water. Um, oh, don't forget your ground cable over here. But yeah, this should look exactly the same as your bike, except for this one line. Uh, that, again, I keep talking about that one line. Uh, that's the only line that's going to be different on your bike in comparison to mine, um, is the, the high flow fuel line that we use for our uh, bigger, um, well, more power build that we have now. Um, so next, we're going to pretty much hook up the radiator really quick and then uh, go from there. So if you've gone this far, Pretty much the rest of this is pretty easy. Um, you have your lower and upper radiator hose. Um, everything's timed. Uh, you have the four bolts that go here for mounting your radiator. So you have one, two, three, four. 
those are going to, I'm not going to mount those yet until I get uh, everything sounding correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide on the radiator where it's supposed to go. And then get the lower radiator hose now. So I'm thinking I'm going to get the uh, upgraded uh, Yuminashi radiator for this bike and the performance fan for it as well for my next uh, set of mods for this bike. A uh, bigger radiator just helps for summer riding uh, and for hard riding, honestly. If you're going to ride this thing a little harder than you're supposed to, um, a bigger radiator will make your ride uh, just so much more reliable and no risk of getting too hot. Uh, cool running bike, you get the maximum performance all the time. You know, and who doesn't want that, you know? Only downside is little radiators for these things are a little pricey. So definitely be prepared to spend a decent chunk of cheese for, um, for a good little radiator. Um, so the pedcock down below should be nice and hand tighten and then just give it a little seal of approval uh, tight <laughs> with your uh, T30 down below. And the next thing is to add coolant. I got my little res here for funnel. Get my bucket. Coolant. Before you uh, do that, make sure you put the uh, overflow or expansion hose on here too. You got one on there before. Because if you don't, what's going to happen? You're going to fill it up, and it's going to spill to the ground. Um, that's it. Um, that's all put back together. We're going to fire it up really quick. Um, I'm going to move you guys over yonder now because the next step here is to listen for it as it turns on. Um, what we're listening for is number one, any odd noises or any variation changes uh, during the process. I gotta open the garage right now um, just because you don't wanna be inside a closed garage with exhaust flowing, that's, that's dangerous, it's a big no-no. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna go to our aid racer. Uh, since this has a standalone ECU uh, A racer Mini 5, uh, for this, um, so we want to make sure uh, we can see our uh, engine temperatures, our RPMs, our voltage, and our AFRs are all within specification. Uh, one thing I'm going to pre-warn you guys, it will get smoky and loud, so I highly recommend turn your volume down at the moment uh, because you're going to hear an exhaust running and you're going to obviously hear a bike with an engine right in front of you without uh, anything containing it. So it will get a little bit louder than normal. Uh, as a pre-warning, all right, guys? Oh, uh, battery's not connected. <laughs> that would make a difference, right? So you hear it fired up. Now the things that we gotta pay really, really close attention to, number one, is for oil leaks. Number two, for coolant leaks. So I made sure the clamps are on here, 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 here. 
here and up here is where everything that we took off. We also want to pay attention to the uh, the housing right here. Make sure there's no leaks around the housing. And then we got to make sure the thermostat opens up. Because uh, once it opens up, this should automatically drop uh, in coolant. That way we can keep adding more. Uh, let's see here. I'll add a little bit in here as well. Um, help with the... Actually, you know, I'll just leave it alone. Um, the coolant we're going to be using, we're going to drain it again because it has a mixture of water and coolant. Um, just because I spilled some, so I need to kind of bring back some back into the engine. So, um, kind of a thing that I ended up um, having an issue with early when I drained or when I was draining the bike. Now it found the ECU. You can see all the metrics are already ready to go. So, here, fire it up. Sounds good. So, right here, remember we got to pay attention to RPMs, uh, temperature, voltage and our AFRs especially. So we gotta make sure the thermostat opens up so we keep adding coolant because if not, we'll, we'll overheat the engine. We start seeing some smoke coming out right here. Again, that's gonna happen because we spilled oil, we spilled coolant during the process. No, no nothing to be like surprised about. So once this bike is done, this should idle around 1700 once it's fully warmed up. You guys can see now I let the bike get pretty hot it got to about 210 when a moment I hit that temperature I turned off the bike and I pit I filled the little coolant reservoir down here below uh, with just water I made sure that the radiator was topped off before that the moment I turned the bike off the thermostat opened and sucked all the water out from over here and pretty much left it dry uh, that to me right now open up the thermostat now you'll see here we're idling at a beautiful 194 192 degrees our AFRs are perfect our uh, RPMs are pretty much exact by manufacturer specifications uh, so everything is perfect uh, the valves uh, are pretty much sound great I don't hear any loud ticking bike is idling and sounding great um, a little rev there and yeah we're good pretty much put your bike back together and uh, enjoy your uh, new cam and the extra performance so Right now, pretty much since the water is now finally looping through, um, 
uh, the water pump pretty much is doing its job. Uh, the next step here is to let the bike run a little bit longer. I would probably recommend riding it around the block. Um, and even like this, just put the seat back in and maybe the floorboard right here, put it in uh, and ride it around the block. Don't put it all back together completely yet. Uh, ride it around the block, look for any leaks, for coolant leaks, for any uh, oil leaks uh, from the head and the water pump side. Uh, you just wanna make sure before you actually go riding that you don't damage anything or do you ride and out of nowhere just all this coolant explodes out of there. Double check your work, always quadruple check your work um, before you go for a ride uh, or something long, you know. Ride it around the block, you know. Rev it up, do whatever you want, but don't take a long ride prior uh, doing this job. <coughs> you wanna confirm that you did the job right. That's it, pretty much uh, there's four bolts that go on here and then the cover that goes on the uh, radiator and then you're done with that. Uh, you may, Do not open the radiator cap right now since this is at 190 degrees, you do not want any coolant bursting out in your face. Um, that's it, you know, don't do anything else outside of this, uh, but the job is now done. Pretty much what you saw right now, uh, this entire project uh, and during my entire build process we just now tore apart the whole entire bike to a point. All that's left now is pulling the engine. Uh, that will be a project for later down the line for me because um, I want to go to a bigger head. I want to go to a 164cc head. I kind of want to go to a dome piston, uh, get some extra performance. I'm, I'm really, really contemplating uh, going up in cc's on this bike or just leaving it here, enjoying my current performance and uh, just overall, and then just get a new bigger bike. Uh, I'm still in the middle of this uh, debate right now. <laughs> so, but other than that, everything else is beautiful. Again, the bike idles nicely. Uh, we're not getting any overheating issues. Uh, the radiator is doing its job. Uh, the coolant levels are pretty much as good as we want, but we don't want water and coolant mixed together on our bike. So I'm gonna drain all of this. Um, today or tomorrow and then get proper Honda coolant and fill the entire system with brand new fresh Honda coolant. Um, I probably want to get it nice and warm that way the thermostat opens up and then drain it out of here the peg cock right here at the bottom. Um, that way we just get clean clean coolant inside of here and and have the bike pretty much at optimal performance. I'm gonna have to add an extra little bit of oil. We did spill a decent amount of oil um, by cranking the engine over and running it when it was uh, without the valve cover on. So we definitely want to put some oil in the inside of here um, on your engine since it might be a little low when we, uh, when we did this job. But that's it, guys. Reverse the rest of the installation and you're good to go. Thank you again, everyone, for watching this episode of Pinchiao's Garage and how to install a DCR cam on our Honda ADV 150. Peace out, guys, and happy wrenching. And as always here at Pinchel's Garage, we're going to break, we're going to fix, and we're going to repeat. Deuces.